Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for coming back. If you're new here, my name is Amber and this is a space where I talk about all things motherhood. So if you're new, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit that bell so you won't miss another notification from me. All right guys, so I have reached my 500 subscriber goal this month. So, like I told you guys, once I hit 500 subscribers, I will be doing a $50 Cash App giveaway. So, the rules are you have to be subscribed to my channel here and you have to follow me on Instagram. Then, after you follow me on both platforms, go below, down in the comments, and go ahead and leave your Cash App name. I will be picking the winner on my birthday, June 2nd, and you will be notified via Instagram and YouTube. So, good luck. All right, so let's go ahead and let's get this started. So, in today's video, I will be giving you guys my birth story and I will be inserting a lot of clips throughout this story. This is the story of my unplanned emergency C-section that like pretty much devastated me if you really wanna be honest. So if you see me looking down, I'm looking down at my phone because I have some notes here and dates that I wanna remember so that way I can give you guys the most accurate story that I can. Let's get started. My first son Maverick was due October 9th, 2018. He was born October 10th, 2018. I'm going to give you guys a little backstory about my prenatal care. So initially I was supposed to give birth, non-medicated, no invasive procedures, nothing, just good old natural pushing and some warm water in a tub at a birthing center. Unfortunately, that did not work out for me. So at my last appointment, when I was 39 weeks and six days, I decided to have my membrane strip. For those of you wondering, a membrane sweep is, and I'm reading it right from Google, also referred to as a membrane sweep. This technique involves gently lifting the amniotic sac or fetal membrane from the cervix. So basically the sac is separated from your uterine wall um, to basically get the labor process started. So after that, I decided my husband and I should go on a hike so that way I can take you know, advantage of the sweep I just had. I didn't want it to go to waste because I've heard so many women say they've had a sweep and it didn't work. So I was like, I want to make sure this works. When you're a first time mom, you just, you're just ready for your baby to come. You don't really understand timing and just giving your body time because you could go up to 42 weeks and that'd be completely normal. But unfortunately, I was very impatient. I decided to get the sweep and that is kind of how this all started. I decided to take my husband and we went for a hike. We hiked for about three miles down in the canyon, down near my home. It was actually a very, very hot day. I know it was October, but I live in Southern California, so it was hot. And I, I remember that vividly. I was like, God, it's hot outside. Go put some pepper in your stuff, girl. And also I was very pregnant, but nonetheless. So we hiked and I remember feeling some contractions and I was like, okay, things are starting. It was very irregular. They were maybe one every 20 minutes, sometimes every 30 minutes, some went to 10 minutes. So they're very sporadic. So nothing crazy, but we did hike for about three, four miles. So I decided after the hike that we should go home. I would take a bath, lay down, get some rest, get my little third trimester nap. Any ladies who are pregnant know how that goes. You need that third trimester nap. And you know, just kind of see what happened from there. Just a little side note, sorry if I didn't tell you. I had my appointment for my sweep that morning, so this was about 10 o'clock. We went on the hike at about noon, so I got home around two or three o'clock that afternoon. So around four or five o'clock, um, maybe a few hours later, I woke up from my nap and I was like, okay, wow, I'm starting to feel contractions. They were happening pretty consistently at this point. It was every 10 minutes at this point. So in my head, I'm like, okay, this is it. This is the start of the labor process. I called my midwife at the birthing center and I was like, all right, this is what's happening. This is what's going on. Just to give them a heads up. Um, I know I was a first time mom, so they knew that labor would be very, very slow, but they just told me to try and relax as much as I could, try and just hold on. And I was like, okay, that's fine. So that's what I did. Going throughout the night, I was just incredibly, incredibly, incredibly uncomfortable. I was, I couldn't sleep. They were like, well, just try and sleep. I couldn't sleep, I, I'm in labor, like very prodromal labor, like meaning very long, but I was in labor nonetheless. So finally around midnight, I called the midwife again. I'm like, look, please see me. Can we just see like if anything's working, if anything is happening, am I dilating, is my cervix thinning? Please just check me out. So we get to the birthing center around midnight, 1 a.m. And she proceeds to check me and I'm only dilated to one centimeter. I'm not even fully thinned out or effaced. I was distraught, I won't lie. I was completely, completely distraught. I stay there, they're like, okay, well let's, you know, change some positions, maybe we can help you. She said that she still felt like the baby was pretty high. 
so we were gonna try and do some exercises to help the baby drop and also there was a student there who was an acupuncturist school so she began using some um, needles to try and help me with the pain and try and help me by stimulating certain points to help the baby drop unfortunately that did not work so around three in the morning they were just like you know what go home just go ahead go home try and get some rest try and just relax and you know just give your body a little bit of time and you know change positions take baths they were like we know it's going to be painful but you know this is just going to take some time especially if you want this to happen naturally so i go home at this point it's three o'clock in the morning on october 9th and i'm like okay well i am just going to be miserable so i try and i wait and i wait and i'm like I can't do this i i like literally can't do this so i end up telling my husband around maybe 4 p.m i'm like take me to the hospital now before i told him to take me to the hospital i initially told my husband before i even knew what labor was i was like you know i just want to do this naturally if i ask you for drugs tell me no deter me from that you know don't let me go to the hospital like we're just going to do it so natural so when I asked my husband to take me to the hospital, he's like, are you sure, you know, you can do it naturally and blah, 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 blah. I did not care what he had to say. I didn't, I didn't care. I was in so much pain. I was like, take me to a hospital and give me an epidural right now. At this moment, now, now, now. At this point, I had been in labor for 24 hours. I was not doing this any longer. I wasn't doing natural, I didn't care. I didn't care about any of the risk. I wanted pain relief and I wanted out. It had gone on too long. So around four o'clock we get to the hospital and I am only at three centimeters. I could have cried. I could have cried, I could have left. Oh my God, it was so bad. I like thinking about it makes me wanna cry because I was so upset, I was just like, what is going on? I've been doing this for 24 hours. I've been uncomfortable for 24 hours. Why haven't I progressed? What's going on? So we get to the hospital. They tell me that I'm at three centimeters and they tell me, look, we'll give you an hour to walk around, walk up the stairs to, and try and see if you dilate more. And if you get to a four, we will accept you. So we decided to walk around the hospitals, walk around the halls. I threw up in every trash can that I could find. My body was just in overdrive. I was just, oh my God, it was horrible. I like literally threw up in like the janitor's trash can, like walking by. <laughs> it was all bad. It was all bad. So after my hour is over, yes, I do make it to four centimeters and they're like, okay, we're gonna take you upstairs. In my head, I'm thinking, okay, they're gonna take me upstairs right now. Like I'm going upstairs like, at this moment. No, that's not what they meant. What they meant was they were gonna give me a little bit of time, make a bed, take their time, and then I was gonna get a bed. So between them saying that they're gonna admit me and me getting, getting a bed, it took about another mm, two to three hours. Finally, I make it into the room right before midnight. I wanna say it was like 11 p.m. on the 9th, on October 9th. We get in the room and I get the epidural. Oh my God. By the grace of God, the anesthesiologist was able to come in and give me my epidural as soon as I stepped into the room. I was so grateful. I was like, thank God. Cause they had given me fentanyl down in triage and that was horrible it did nothing like it it didn't even take the edge off the epidural was like life-changing she got an epidural feeling fine so around three or four in the morning um i get checked and they're like look you're not progressing as fast as we'd like i think it was five centimeters at that point and they were like you know you kind of should be a little further along my water hadn't broken either so it was kind of okay but they were like look Let's just go ahead and let's start the Pitocin. If we do the Pitocin on really low, you know, in the next few hours, you should be at 10 and ready to push. They start the Pitocin and they were right at like seven or 8 a.m. on October 10. I was a full 10 centimeters. I was thinned out, I was ready. Unfortunately, the baby was still high. He wasn't ready to come down, which was, oh my God, it was horrible. At this point around seven or eight that morning on the 10th, um, this is when shift change happens in, in most hospitals and my I had different nurses. The nurse that I had the night 
before was just so nice and so kind and so knowledgeable. I'm not saying that my day nurse wasn't, but my night nurse was constantly having me on the peanut ball and moving positions and sitting up and all these things. And once the second nurse came in, she just had me like lay on my back. The baby had nowhere to go. And I was so numbed up from the epidural, I literally couldn't move. Like I started pushing at nine o'clock. I was on my back for at least two, maybe three hours just pushing. The baby would not descend. So finally, I decided to turn around and try and get on all fours. I asked them to kind of lessen the dosage of the epidural and so I could get on all fours and try to push. So once I got on all fours, I started pushing and the baby was descending a little bit, but not enough and not fast enough. So eventually the doctor comes in. Keep in mind, I'd never met this doctor. I'd never even had prenatal care from this hospital. And so they didn't know who I was, what my birth plan was, nothing. You know, I just came to these people at the last minute and they're just like, you have to have a C-section. And I was like, please, just please allow me to try and push, please. So they were like, okay, we'll give you another hour and we'll see if you can, you know, make the baby come down. I push for another hour. I'm trying all these different positions, like up, down, left, right. Like I'm trying so hard because I did not want to have a C-section, but nothing worked. I was stuck. So I ended up having to have a C-section. According to the doctor, they were saying that the baby's heart rate was compromised, my heart rate was compromised, my health was compromised, you know, the higher infection risk, et cetera, et cetera. So they were like, we have to hurry up and get you down for an emergency C-section. This is around one o'clock and they bring me down, they give me some more medication and my epidural and at this point, I'm woozy. I have no idea what's going on. I can't even see straight. Like my husband is like crying because he says he's never seen me like that. He's like, what is going on? I wasn't coherent at all. Um, I don't know what they put in that thing, but oh my God, it was crazy. All right, so finally they start cutting and Maverick is born. Amber, you did it, you did it. And this is the part where it really, really affects me. Maverick is born and I have no idea. I don't remember. I don't remember him being born. I don't remember me being cut open. I don't remember any of these things. I remember laying on the table, then putting something in my epidural and I was just out of it. I ended up needing a transfusion during that birth because I had lost so much blood. You know, it was just, it was wild. And the reason why I didn't want to go to a hospital for birth was because of this. As a nurse, I've seen and I've heard stories about women, you know, having these traumatic births and I was scared to be one of them. And here I am laying on a table having the traumatic birth. You know, I don't remember seeing my baby. I don't remember having skin to skin. My husband's crying holding a baby because he's like wondering like, what is going on with me? They take the baby. My husband has to leave out of the operating room. We're all separated. The baby's in one place. I'm still in the operating room and they tell my husband he has to leave. It, it just was not, it was not my ideal birth and I felt so horrible. I felt I felt like I did this to myself. I felt like because I asked for the sweep that now it's my fault. I didn't wait. I wasn't patient and this is why I'm in the predicament I'm in. And I'm thinking like all these irrational thoughts like what if my husband wants to leave me because he's petrified or he's been traumatized. What if my baby's not attached to me because we weren't able to have skin to skin as soon as he was born and he wasn't able to breastfeed. Like all these things start running through my mind. These are all the things that I can think once I'm finally awake. Once I leave the operating room, I go to recovery and even in the recovery room, I don't remember a lot. Like I was in and out of like consciousness. The moments where I was alert and I could kind of recall things and put things together, I didn't like it. I was just like, wow. I just remember crying like, what is going on? Like, this is not what I thought it would be. So after I leave recovery, I go back to my room. My husband's there, he's like in shock. He's like, what just happened? Because neither one of us were prepared for this, to be completely honest. We were not expecting this. We didn't even know what to expect, even if this did happen. And it was just a shocker. It was a blow. It really was. You know, the baby, like I'm still kind of like hazy and falling asleep with the baby. It was just not the greatest experience. But about 12 hours after that, my epidural fully wore off and I was able to kind of like recall a lot of things. I was alert 
And I think at that point, my husband was like, okay, she's fine, she's gonna be okay. Um, so we were kind of able to move past it and just kind of enjoy this, these first times together as a family. But I think just the initial birthing process was just overall, it was just so traumatic. It was like, whoa. Like this isn't what anyone planned. No one planned this. And it was scary. It was really, really scary if you wanna be really honest. So I only ended up spending two days in the hospital. I begged and begged for them to let me go. I'm like, look, I'm a nurse. I, if anything happens, I know what to do, where to go and who to call. I just hate being in the hospital. If you're a nurse, you know that you're like the worst patient ever and you just kind of feel like, why am I here? Cause you feel like you're supposed to be helping people not people helping you. So it was just awkward. I didn't really like being in the hospital. I didn't like feeling so, helpless i guess that's the word i don't like feeling helpless finally we were able to go home and we were able to bring maverick home he's so cute you know i healed from my c-section of course i'll always have the scar forever but it didn't keloid too bad it was it looks fine honestly it was just the most traumatic birthing story ever like for me it was just a lot i just i never want to do that again thank god and thank God I was able to have my successful V back with my littlest little blaze. Thank Jesus, because I don't think I could handle another traumatic C-section. That was just way too much for me. But thank you guys so much for listening to my birth story. But that is it for this birth story. Thank you so much for watching. If any of you moms have any similar experiences or would like to tell me about your birth story, let me know down in the comments below. Again, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Follow me on Instagram, and I will see you guys in my next video.